Hi. Happy Wednesday, everybody. I'm really pushing my luck with my phone on this one. But, hey, what are you gonna do? Hope everybody's uh, woke up, had a nice bowl of Cheerios, corn flakes, or whatever it may be, out here on the lake. Oh, I wonder, Mr. Thompson, how are you out so early in the morning? I'm not, it's not actually Wednesday. You're probably wondering, Mr. Thompson, how do you not float into that giant pier right there? Mr. Thompson said, I don't know. I better get my paddle out and do a little bit of back down. So I'm about to hit this thing. So here we go. Now I came out here because normally you'd be surprised. This, this break wall here, uh -oh. this break wall here. Keep moving. Keep moving, Thompson. <laughs> this break wall goes all the way down uh, from like the Peace Bridge, all the way down to where the wind turbines are. You know those giant windmills, you may know those babies. But um, yeah, I'm getting it. Don't panic. I'm not. Sort of not. Ha <laughs> ha! Woo! One more stroke and I think I'm good. Uh, one more for safety. There we go. It's pretty windy out here. <clears throat> yeah, I know it's not a morning. Wednesday morning, I'm fooling you. I came out here because normally that big metal thing right here, that thing is loaded with birds. This is the end of a pier in this little opening spot here between here and there. That metal and out here. That's how the boats get in and out. What they did is they made this great big giant wall. And the wall is here. It goes down like that. It also goes in the other way too. And this wall is gigantic. And what it does is it pr protects all the boats from the storms that come in off the lake. And there's lots of storms that come in off the lake. As a matter of fact, uh, one of our old principals told me that it is like the third largest natural man-made harbor in the world. Something like that. If not, maybe just the United States. But I'm pretty sure she said the word world. So you guys that are all googly can uh, maybe look that up. But it's pretty incredible. So here I am, and there's all these birds out here all the time. It's a lot of fun about going out kayaking on the lake because you see all these birds all the time. Well, I started thinking about birds, and I thought that would be part of our Wednesday math journal. So there's these things called purple martins, and they make these bird houses for purple martins. And the purple martins, um, they fly around. They're kind of like barn swallows. They fly all over. And uh, so... I started thinking about instead of a square birdhouse, what about a triangular birdhouse? You know, shaped like a triangle, kind of like a, what you set up the pool balls with, or um, think about bowling pins or something like that. So, a couple of strokes here. <laughs> I got it. So, Let's think about that triangle. Now, if I made a triangular birdhouse, the cross draw here. If I made a triangular birdhouse and I put one hole in that birdhouse, in the middle of the triangle, that would hold one bird. And I would say that is one level of my birdhouse. Now, if I made my triangle a little bit bigger so that I could have one hole and then two holes underneath it. The one hole that I already made would be on the top level. The two holes underneath would be level number two. One hole on the first level, two holes underneath. And that would hold three birds. And if I did that one more time, let's say I had the first level, which holds one bird, and this is all a triangle. Second level, which holds two birds. If I put on a third level, it would hold three birds. So think about it, one, two, three. One in the top row, two in the next row, three in the next row. If you think about that, so far I have room for six birds in my birdhouse. And I could keep adding another level, adding one more set of hole, one more hole to each row. As I went down, it would make a big triangle and I could keep going down and adding more and more holes for the birds. 
one more hole on each level. First hole has one, second hole level has two, third level has three holes, fourth level has four holes, and so on. So my question to you is to try to figure out how many levels I need if I wanted to make a birdhouse that would hold, have enough holes for 50 birds. Yep, probably gonna have to use that strategy and make a drawing, which you probably used last week too. So, how many levels would my birdhouse have to be to have enough holes for 50 birds? And then if you're feeling really good, really pretty good, you got a pattern or something, you think you're getting it, try to figure out how many it would be for 100 birds. So you're gonna have to do that in your journal, do a drawing, and you're gonna start working on that, maybe doing a little bit of read to self. Remember, those of you that were in class yesterday, Thursday is your day to do your uh, work from class, right? Today is our math stuff. It's our wacky Wednesday, our different Wednesday. So math journal question, how many levels of my birdhouse would I have to have to hold 50 birds? And if you're feeling up for the challenge, how many would it take to hold up 100? There's the city of Buffalo downtown. Woohoo! All right. If you work on that this morning, after you're done with that, do your read to self. We're going to see you on Zoom, your Zoom meeting at 1030. We can ask any questions about the math journal you want, but get started on that. Do your read to self, and then we'll meet at 1030 for our Zoom. And that's it. I'm going to say goodbye and paddle my way back into shore.